Three, two, one, go. Look at those balls drop. Hey folks, I'm Carl Willis. I'm on the nuclear engineering faculty at the University of New Mexico, where we are in the, uh, one of the student labs today. And also I'm the public information and outreach coordinator for the Trinity section of the American Nuclear Society. And I've got a little happy holidays message for you today um, in honor of Nuclear Science Week, my favorite holiday, uh, 2021. So uh, I hope you're preparing to celebrate. Um, we're going to talk about making our balls drop. We're going to talk about a phenomenon called static cling. And in this snow globe I've got right here, you can see that there are little polystyrene balls and some of them are clinging to the front surface of this snow globe. In fact, I can, I can make this worse real easily if I just, uh, if I just rub some uh, dissimilar plastic on the front of this guy and uh, just let these balls uh, come up into contact with the front. Yeah, that looks pretty bad. Okay, so static cling is a problem with some toys like this one, also some industrial processes. Anywhere you have the frictional generation of electric charge that causes oppositely charged things to just stick together. Electrostatic forces are extremely strong, and in this case, they're out competing gravity to keep the balls suspended up on the face of the snow globe. So often we want to know, well, what can we do about something like this? And as a nuclear engineer, of course, my mind is always going to, well, you know, there must be some way we can use radiation to solve this problem. I'm going to go get a very hot strontium-90 source, and we're going to see what it does to this bad boy. So let's check this out. All right, let's get a count of three. One, two, three. pretty cool. It's almost like magic. It's a force field that just makes the, the pellets fall down. And uh, of course, really what's happening is the beta particles from that strontium-90 are getting into the air, creating ions, allowing electrostatic charges to be neutralized, and the pellets fall down. This phenomenon was actually commercialized back in the 1950s and 60s when everybody thought that World War III was right around the corner and the Soviet Union and the United States were gonna bomb each other into oblivion and there'd be nuclear winter and you know all that kind of good stuff. Um, the, the typical devices were actually a little tube and you were instructed to, to shake it and there would be some little plastic balls and they would cling to the, to the walls of that tube and if it received an appropriately high dose of radiation, and we're talking about like on the order of a rem or so, a rentgen in air, um, those balls would fall down and the instructions told you to run to the nearest fallout shelter and hunker down because Armageddon was upon you. Now these things are valuable antiques and you see these little ball, uh, ball and tube deals on eBay for a thousand dollars. Anyway, so let's, let's, let's do this one more time. I'm going to charge this guy up and we'll take one more look at what's going on in there. I'm really going to give it a good working over this time. Get a lot of balls in, in, in play. Out here in New Mexico, it's a nice dry climate for doing stuff like this. That makes it good. So I think that is a pretty good, uh, pretty good deal. Now I need to put this back where it's supposed to go, like right there. Okay. We're going to get out the strontium-90 again. And once again, we're going to do it on the count of three. So, three, two, one. It'd be nice if there were some sort of Latin incantation I could uh, do to make this all Harry Potter-like. I think that's a pretty good demonstration of how radioactive material can be used to eliminate static cling. Um, it's a shame that toys like this aren't sold with uh, a radioactive wand for dealing with the problem. 
I think that would get into some regulatory territory that a lot of people these days are just, you know, not. But back in the old days, I'm fond of talking about the old days, back in the 40s, 50s, there were some consumer items that were sold that actually did use radiation to eliminate static cling. And uh, I'm going to show you one of those devices right now. So this little device here is called a walkie record all. It's basically a little phonograph device. They were built in the 1940s and 50s. Some have solid state electronics, some are tubes. Uh, depends when you, they, uh, they were made. But basically it's a little phonograph device for recording your, uh, you know, secret, uh, your industrial espionage or your legal, uh, uh, what have you. Anyway, so there'd be a band of plastic in there that would be embossed by a stylus that's over here. And there's actually a very strong radium source in the back here. Let me give you a demonstration. It's hot. Yeah. <laughs> it's hot. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a good, it's a, anyway. It's a nice hot radium source, and the reason why it was needed is to be able to dissipate the static charge between the sauna band, the piece of plastic that's getting embossed, and the little chips of plastic that would be made by the stylus that was cutting them off. Otherwise, they would stick there, they would create a noisy recording. So this uh, manufacturer decided to use radioactive material to solve the problem of static cling. Folks, I hope, uh, I hope you've enjoyed today's uh, program. Have a wonderful Nuclear Science Week, and uh, look forward to joining you for more videos. And if you're interested in joining the uh, local chapter of the American Nuclear Society, I know that a lot of the economy in this part of New Mexico is driven by nuclear uh, technology. I encourage you to visit us at our website and, uh, and join up. We'd love to have you. Three, two, one, go. Et voila.